Do crop sensor cameras affect a lens's aperture? Lots of photographers actually disagree on this, so I'm gonna put the topic to rest on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey everyone, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions on Adorama TV. If you've got a question, just go to askdavidbergman.com and submit that form on the site. If it's one that I think is gonna help a lot of other photographers, I just might pick it to answer here on a future show. I've also only got a few spots left in my Shoot From The Pit live concert photography workshops this fall. If you wanna learn everything I know about photographing concerts at a real arena show, just go to shootfromthepit.com to sign up today before they're all gone. All right, today I've got a good question sent in from JG and he wants to know, I'm thinking about buying the Canon R7 alongside my R6. Are there any consequences on the aperture of normal RF lenses if they're put on the new APS-C Canon R7? For example, if I put on my RF 85mm f2 lens, will it still be f2 on the R7, or will the maximum aperture be slower? Sorry if this is a noob question, but I hope you can help me. Thanks for your great content, Jay from the Netherlands. Thanks so much, Jay from the Netherlands, for sending that in. Don't worry about sounding like a noob. Even more experienced photographers have debates about this very topic. So let me see if I can clear things up. So what are we talking about here? Well, I'm sure most of you know what a crop sensor camera is, but just so we're all on the same page, when we talk about full frame cameras, we're referring to a camera body where the sensor that captures the image is the same size as a piece of 35 millimeter film, the image on a piece of 35 millimeter film. That's 24 millimeters by 36 millimeters. Little sidebar, doesn't it seem odd that 24 by 36 millimeter film is called 35 millimeter film? Kind of strange, right? But 35 millimeters is actually the width of the film, including the sprocket holes. That 24 millimeter side, if you extend that out 35 millimeters, that's the width of the film. You're welcome, that's a little freebie. I won't charge you for that extra tip. But um, so full frame digital cameras have that same 24 by 36 millimeter size sensor. That means that when you put a lens on a 35 millimeter film camera and then move that same lens to a full frame digital camera, the image is gonna look exactly the same. There might be differences just based on image quality because one is film and one is digital, but the field of view and the depth of field should look exactly the same. But here's the thing, sensors are very expensive to make and full frame is usually reserved for higher end cameras. The first digital cameras had much smaller sensors in them. I was actually a beta tester for a camera in the mid 1990s that was incredibly crude by today's standards. It was an adapted film camera where they had replaced the film plane with a small digital sensor. The mirror in the viewfinder had a box drawn on it, and that was roughly the frame I had to shoot. I had to keep my subject in that little box. The whole thing was tethered probably by a SCSI cable to a hard drive that I wore in a backpack. I remember trying to make pictures of Michael Jordan with that thing when the Bulls swept the Miami Heat in the first round of the 1996 playoffs. I was at the Miami Herald at the time, and the images were basically unusable, but I knew that it was a glimpse into the future of photo technology. Anyway, we're in a much better place today. In addition to the full frame options that we have, the camera manufacturers wisely decided to make some cameras with smaller sensors in them as well, so that they are more affordable. Jay said he has a Canon R6, which is a full frame body, and he's thinking about buying the new R7, which has a smaller APS-C size sensor. The thing to remember is that the way the optics work, when using the same lens on both a full frame and a crop sensor camera, the crop sensor camera is capturing a smaller portion of the image. They also make lenses that are specifically made for cameras with smaller sensors. Those are smaller, lighter, and less expensive than their full frame counterparts because they only have to project a smaller image circle to cover that smaller image sensor. Either way, the size of the sensor changes the field of view of the captured image. In the case of APS-C, you can calculate that change by at uh, 1.6 times the focal length. So a 100 millimeter lens on a 1.6 crop sensor body has the same field of view as a 160 millimeter lens on a full frame body. Now, there's some really important semantics going on here. First, I'm saying very specifically that it changes the field of view and not the focal length. Field of view is what you're seeing through the lens. A narrower field of view is gonna mimic the look of a longer focal length because you're cutting off the outsides of that image. But understand this, the focal length does not change. Focal length is a measurement inside the lens. An 85 millimeter lens is always an 85 millimeter lens no matter what camera you put it on. By capturing a smaller portion of the image projected onto that digital sensor, you're changing the field of view but not changing the focal length of the lens. 
Sometimes you'll see that they market crop sensor lenses by stating the 35 millimeter or full frame equivalent. That 85 millimeter lens made for APS-C might say it has the full frame equivalent of 136 millimeters. That's really just for simplicity because many people are more familiar with how the field of view looks on certain lenses from their 35 millimeter film days. It really should say it has the same field of view as a 136 millimeter lens, not focal length. Okay, so now we know that a smaller sensor affects the field of view, but Jay's asking about the aperture. A lot of photographers will say that you also need to calculate a new aperture when using a smaller sensor. What? Again, this really is semantics, but I'm gonna explain why they say that. Just like focal length, aperture is a measurement inside the lens. It does not change based on what body you put it on. Jay asked if he puts his full frame RF 85 millimeter F2 lens on an APS-C R7 body, will it still be F2? Absolutely yes, 100%. That lens is always gonna be F2.0. Now to demonstrate, I took some photos of my Bon Jovi coffee table book called Work. I put the books on the floor about a few feet in front of each other, and then I shot two images with the same lens at the same distance on two different bodies. I used the 100 to 400 millimeter lens on the full frame Canon EOS R3, and then also on the APS-C sized EOS M5. Both had adapters on them so I could use that EF lens. Now I zoomed to 200 millimeters and both were shot at the same exposure of a fifth of a second at 5.6 at 1250 ISO. Now you can see, of course, that the field of view is very different in the two images. The crop sensor has a field of view that's the same as if I was shooting with a 320 millimeter lens. That's 1.6 times 200 millimeters. But let's look at the depth of field. How out of focus is the background? Is it the same in each? Well, if I crop in on the full frame image to match the field of view of the APS-C, you can see they're exactly the same. There are some other slight differences because I'm using very different cameras, but the depth of field hasn't changed at all just because I'm capturing a smaller cropped portion of the frame. So then why is this even a question? Why do some photographers say that you have to make an adjustment for aperture on crop sensor cameras? The reason is because if I want the same field of view from the crop sensor that I have in the full frame, I have to back the camera up or zoom out my lens, right? The crop sensor is tighter on my subject, so I have to physically move the lens further away, or in this case, I just zoomed out from 200 to 125 millimeters to get the same field of view as the full frame at 200 millimeters. Now, if I compare these two images, the R3 has a shallower depth of field than the smaller sensor M5. Look at the top where it says Bon Jovi. Pretty big difference, right? So even though I'm shooting at the same aperture, the depth of field is different but that's only because I zoomed out to match the field of view I had on the full frame body. So while technically Jay's F2 lens will still give him F2 no matter which camera he uses, if he wants to match the field of view of both of his cameras, he's gonna have to back up when using that new R7, and that's not gonna give him the same shallow depth of field look as the full frame R6. But here's the thing, in my mind, it's kind of dangerous to say that the aperture when using a crop sensor is different than full frame. Why is that? Well, I think it's okay when you're talking about focal length to do that because the only change is the field of view. Aperture, however, doesn't only affect the depth of field, it also affects your exposure. I might want to buy an F2 lens because I shoot in low light and want a nice wide open aperture to let in a lot of light and get a nice bright exposure. The brightness of my image doesn't change if I'm only capturing a smaller part of the image. F2 is F2 is F2. If I, if I choose to move closer or further away or zoom in or out, that's gonna change the depth of field, but it won't change the aperture. Look, all of this only matters if you're really familiar with the look of full frame or 35 millimeter film and wanna match it on a crop sensor. At the end of the day, use the bodies and lenses that you have to go out and make great images. If it's something that moves us, then no one's gonna care which body or what aperture you made it with. Thanks so much for watching today, I appreciate it. Do me a favor, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. Use the bell icon so you'll be the first to know as soon as new videos come out all week long from all the hosts here on Adorama TV. I hope to see you back here next time when I've got a new question to answer right here on Ask David Bergman.